the same chemical that bleaches hair. Now, as the ice melts, the hydrogen peroxide breaks down and releases massive amounts of oxygen. The Earth is waking up, and it's a very different place. Now, 600 million years ago, the atmosphere is warmer. It feels like a summer's day. And the days are about 22 hours long. Add all this water, and it's the perfect recipe for life. Before Snowball Earth, primitive bacteria had emerged in the oceans. But surely they couldn't have survived an ice age 75 times longer than the entire span of human history. If something has survived, then our best chance of finding it is where we last saw life. In the ocean. Now, 540 million years ago, in an ocean full of oxygen, those primitive bacteria have evolved. A handful must have clung on through the big freeze. There are plants everywhere. And something else. It looks like some kind of armored slug. It's called Wewaxia. It's one of a new generation of complex, multi-celled organisms. We're entering one of the most dynamic periods in the Earth's story. The Cambrian Explosion. Increased oxygen levels allow creatures to grow larger and develop bony skeletons. There are worms sponges and these they're trilobites distant relatives of insects lobsters even scorpions life in the oceans is blossoming from microscopic bacteria To a monster like this. This is Anomalocaris. It's about 60 centimeters long. Look at its large eyes, its razor sharp teeth, and grasping limbs. Anomalocaris has to do is take its pick. The trilobite can't right itself. 
its soft belly is exposed. These are Pikaya. They're just five or so centimeters long, but they've got what may be the first ever spine. Over millions of years, this simple structure will evolve into the spine that keeps us standing erect. And creatures are beginning to take on familiar forms. Beneath the waves, there are already tens of thousands of plant and animal species. The advance of life seems unstoppable. We're looking for life on land. 460 million years ago, and the plates have moved again. Below lies a new continent. Gondwana. It's a warm 30 degrees Celsius. Oxygen levels are close to those in which we live. The land should be covered with plants, crawling with creatures. But there's not much here, beside a few patches of algae. There's only one explanation. The sun. It blasts the surface with deadly radiation. The complex life we've seen in the ocean doesn't stand a chance on land. But 50 kilometers up, where the rays enter the Earth's atmosphere. Something strange is happening. When oxygen meets the sun's radiation, the oxygen turns into another kind of gas, called ozone. This gas forms a blanket around the planet. This ozone layer absorbs the lethal radiation. Over 120 million years, the ozone layer gets thicker and stops more and more radiation from reaching the Earth's surface. Without this layer, life on land simply wouldn't exist. Now, shielded from radiation, life blossoms. Those small mossy lumps are the first land plants and they're pumping out even more oxygen. Levels soar. Three hundred and seventy-five million years ago. There's something down there in the water. It's moving, swimming. It's a strange fish called a tiktalic. Its neck allows it to raise itself up. It uses its fins as if they're legs.
and moves out of the water, where plant life is exploding. Over 15 million years, these creatures called tetrapods evolve. They grow stronger limbs and spend more time out of the water. Until 360 million years ago, they make the land their home. It's from a creature like this that all four-legged vertebrates will evolve. Dinosaurs, birds, mammals, and eventually you and me.